Is this thing on? Okay. I am going to start saving uh, some screenshots of the text messages you've been sending me because <laughs> m my wife believes that I'm a bully and that, <laughs> and I'm mean to you. And I say, no, he's mean to me, but he plays it up on the podcast that he's just Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> tell, tell the, show them how mean I am. What, what do I do this mean? I told oh. you, you were, I sent you an old man. This was an old man emoji that I, I said Doug looked like, but what yeah. preceded it, you see the nerd face? Yeah, <laughs> I think that's fair. <laughs> that was my favorite thing yesterday. So just to, uh, anyway, welcome to the show. Everybody. Oh yeah. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Episode 12. Yesterday, uh, I hit the perfect time where I saw that Alec had just uploaded a video. He's and, guy. and it was within one minute or something it had no views <laughs> so i was laughing too hard and my wife asked what's so funny I, I took a screenshot of that and and cropped it down just so it has a picture of your video with no views <laughs> and i said nobody likes you <laughs> <laughs> and i laughed and i laughed and she said you're such a bully and i said no 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 he was just calling me all these names before so it's all yeah. good it's, Folks, it's it's all in love i think he, can, he he takes care of himself don't worry about it oh yeah you know i i sorted it out i i have a counselor now and it's it's good <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have not uh talked too much this week so this is uh this is real yeah it's really what do you what are you up to yeah. well more of the jeep stuff to be honest a lot of buttoning things up like the exhaust i put him a new muff i welded for the second time ever and my welds looked worse than the first time somehow i don't know how oh you were welding on that car before that's right yeah oh yeah i texted yeah. you a picture of that. yeah yeah so i welded the muffler onto my car with my dad's uh assistance he's kind of dry fitted everything and showed me how everything works and along with that, we've done work to the interior. We ended up fixing the blower motor on the uh, interior, um, you know, like the AC and uh, heat heat blower. And that's turned out to be just unplugged. So some things have been pretty simple, but we thought we'd fix a transmission control module, this little thing that controls the shifting of the vehicle, a uh, little computer, early 80s computer. And that, unfortunately, we we we, twitch, we switched out a chip and it didn't fix it. So I'm going to have to replace the whole module. That's all nerd stuff. But the point is, uh, it's coming along. It's it's actually now a solid driver that doesn't sound like it's going to blow up. Um, but it just turns out that paint is so expensive yeah. that I'm just like, is it even worth it? Should I just drive it around <laughs> rusty? You know, it's about to pit yeah. through, but I guess I'll leave it. I don't know yet. Yeah. I haven't decided, but to be continued. But otherwise, I've been actually getting some carving done, which is nice. I haven't done carving, I feel like, in weeks consistently. That is, um, yeah. I made a video for the school and I another one of my uh, insecure phone calls to Doug going, I don't know if this is a good idea. I think it oh, is. That's but... right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I wanted to make a video for the school about um, making a decent carving into a great carving. And I wanted to take one of my just decent carvings and turn it into a great carving. But Doug was like, no, nope, those are too good. Nope. Start with something yep. beginner, make something from scratch that looks like a beginner carving. Yep. And I should say too, this was my girlfriend's idea. Um, so it worked out. I enjoyed it. I made the video. Uh, it's had good response and um, it was fun. So yeah. I remember uh, Gene Messer did a video years ago where someone sent them their their beginner carving, and he uh -huh. just showed what how he would improve on it. That's cool. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty good because you know the bottom line is it's always deeper cuts. Right. Commit, commit to your cuts. What was right. your not to give away your whole video, but what, what was your uh, greatest? Uh, is it more detail or? Uh... Well. I mean, I think a lot of it was just uh, tightening up 
the proportions getting, yeah. And a lot of it is that depth you're talking about. A lot of times yeah. the tendency is, and then it's also depth in the right spots. Like you got the inside yeah. corners of the eyes, the outside corners of the eyes. You have the uh, nasolabial area right in here right underneath the, the flares. And you got, you know, a whole host of other areas that people end up uh, leaving too flat or not deep enough. So yeah, that's a big part of the problem for folks. Well, that's good. So, yeah, I think that's, I mean, oh, and Sitting Bull finally started on the headdress and I've been filming all the while I've been carving this and I kind of threw, I threw it together today, uploaded it. Uh, and it's, so it's on YouTube now and it's just fast forward. I mean, it's a time-lapse type video, uh, but you know, I did get some work on it done today. Uh, and so that's, that's been nice getting some carving, actually carving, reminding myself what I do for a living has been good. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, I think that's about it for the most part, as far as like major events, um, been going to the gym with my girlfriend lately and I feel very sore all the time. And, uh, wow. that's my highlight reel of the week. Highlight reel. What about oh. you? Well, you're, that's, that's more than me. I yeah. have been, uh, it's been, uh, very unproductive as far as, uh, something to talk about. It's yeah. been firewood. Really, work in work in firewood. I have, as usual, but this is an extreme this year. Yeah. I have uh, put everybody always ahead of myself, and I, uh, what what's it the uh, Aesop fable? Is it the uh, grasshopper and the was it a turtle? Oh, yeah. It's it's been it's been what fifteen years. So I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I've been the uh, the grasshopper off gallivanting around and uh, yeah. not getting my my work done and getting ready for winter. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I've always I've had the wood. I just, it's just a matter of processing it and stacking it. Right. So it, it's been drying for a couple of years. But uh, yeah, that's what all I've been doing. Yeah. Well, that you heat with the, wood too, so it's not like only, sol solely wood. And we're we're in November wow. now. Oh and, wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've got it. I just have to yeah get it all finished splitting and stacked but right. yeah very uh very unimpressed with myself that uh, i didn't uh, make wiser use of my time but anyway <laughs> well work if, out. if it makes you feel any better i didn't mow my lawn more than three times this year really i mowed my lawn today for the first time in like three months maybe two months Ta two months Will yeah neighbors do it for you no, well, I, I've tried all, all year. I've, well, realistically, I've called three people, but I've tried this year to find someone who'll cut my lawn. But it's so oddly, it's so oddly angled and hard to get to all the corners and crooks that people hate it and they will not do it. They refuse to do it. They just say it's not worth their time. I'm like, well, I'll pay you more. No, it's just not worth their time. It's too, it's too much. People just want to buzz around and then finish it up and they can't do it. So I have a heavily shaded area. And so I don't, it doesn't grow very quickly. So there's trees over everything. Everything grows snail pace. So the lawn, even though it's been, you know, maybe it doesn't get cut, it'll go about this length and then bend over. And it just kind of, I don't know, but it needs to, it needed to get cut. So I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around what kind of a 26 year old boy, 27, 27 year old boy, <laughs> boy can hire out his lawn cutting yeah well i just don't i just don't want to i don't want to do well in in their defense i guess i don't like cutting it either because it's so whack i mean there's so many weird <laughs> little i got my lawnmower i had to tow my lawnmower out of two different situations because i have this little riding lawnmower that my grandma gave me uh and yeah i had to get the, i had to hitch it up to the truck and pull it out twice <laughs> well i'm going to uh i'm going to cancel the uh, gofundme for the starving artist no one knows Alex. <laughs> He's got money to pay people to cut his grass. Well, it was 30 bones, but you know, I mean, I guess I'd have paid more because it's just a pain in the butt. I'd rather let's put it this way. I would much rather sit in the shop for an extra hour because that's how long it takes. It takes me about an hour. It's not bad. Yeah. Then I would to sit out there and try and get the lawnmower unstuck from these weird wet corners that are my <laughs> my poor landscaping plan created. Uh, well anyway so other than firewood uh oh the purge continued more oh yeah a couple more more auctions <laughs> of uh 
of uh, unused tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I'm almost there. I think I'm almost in my happy spot. Oh, yeah. Why don't you show so, them? Uh... <laughs> Why don't you show them your new acquisition, Mr. Uh... Well, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to be like that for? Cleaning house. <laughs> Cleaning house and opening the mail packages. At the same yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's referring to everybody. Uh, yeah. Love my my slick, the big <laughs> slick that I was uh, carving bark with in the video. Mm -hmm. So I got a, a matching gouge. Yeah, so, yeah. But anyway, the purge still continues. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there's only a few odds and ends, and uh, to be honest, I'll probably just hold off now to get rid of anything else because uh, yeah. I'm really kind of probably annoying people at this point too <laughs> with these little auctions, but. Uh, but so. it's been good it feels great feels great to have things narrowed down to basically all i have is is uh not uh, a couple of different things but file <laughs> file tools medium set and a large set yeah well that's all you, that's, yeah that's all you need you know and uh i always tell people too i said i don't recommend don't follow me don't do what i do yeah like those those medium sized file tools mm -hmm. i don't know any character carvers that are using them but for my right. hands I like them. Right. So like, don't, don't be like me, like get the palm tools. Yeah. Right. I just, I just prefer the, uh, the medium size for uh, smaller stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. That's good. Totally with you. Well, I mean, it's, there's more, ver they're more versatile too. I mean, you can choke up on this sort of tool, you know, again, I'm with you. Most people, especially beginners are going to end up stabbing themselves with it. Cause it's not, it's not very yeah. uh, ergonomic, yeah. but. Yeah, you can hold it tight up against the throat and then get your work, get your carving in tight. And then, yeah. you know, if you need to do but, big stuff. Well, look at, back look at, like those are, look at my, sorry, audio again, but look at my paws. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have small hands. You got so big ones, man. I, I, I like the, uh, just the, I just like using the, the medium sized tools and people always want to want you to recommend what to buy and said don't buy what i use because right. it's uh you won't be happy do you see your there's an emo okay we've had this problem with zoom an emoji pops up in the upper left hand corner randomly in doug's screen no i know what it is what is I'm, it uh, my hand is raised i saw your hand raised and that's why i was wondering so if i raise my hand there's no way yeah yeah it's gonna say hey i got a question and then the well, now it doesn't do it. It just seems to happen randomly. And I thought it was a great coincidence that your hand was I think it happened right. exactly when I held my hand up to the, it the did. screen. That's what I'm saying. If it wasn't a coincidence, yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. It's watching you. you. Oh, you know it so. is. You know what he is. Yeah. So, uh, we had a topic. We did. We did we have did. a topic. It's a kind of an interesting topic because uh, I'm kind of it's it's about me and it's not about me it's about others too but it's like the question what that came in was like uh, when do you know it's you can or when is it time to sell carvings or when when is it when do you know you're good enough to sell your carvings or when should you sell your carvings? This is a great question and you and I were chatting uh on facetime because i i think i introduced you to nate ellerton on facetime and i was walking back to my car to grab something and a lady pulled me and she said hey excuse me i have a question for you while you were on facetime she said i am here with, visiting a friend my husband and i and we wanted to support him he hasn't sold a single thing and he paid 35 dollars to be here so i thought we'd like to buy him something but the truth is he's not a good carver and we truly don't want to give him the impression that he should continue doing these shows. So we want to help him out by buying a carving from him, but we don't want to continue. We don't want him to continue doing something that he's definitely not gifted in whatsoever. Well, not get, not ready would be fair. Well, yeah. To say, to say not gifted. That's, that's, that's a little well, harsh. Yeah, she was a little harsh. <laughs> 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 and so we, I just said, let me think about that. And I went back out to my car. And we talked about it and yeah. it just makes you think, you know, your friends are the last people to want to tell you that you're, you know, you, you stink at something and you need to improve, but. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Because my first carving, 
mm-hmm. as proud as I was, I showed it to everybody I knew. Yeah. Not one of the, not one of them said, "Go back to the drawing board." Right. Like, go 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 home and practice before you show your work. You know, right. they all said, "Oh, that looks great. I love it." <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, for me, like I have waffled back and forth all the time. Even even, uh, even this month, I was like, "Should I sell some stuff? Should I not sell some stuff?" But yeah, the truth is, like at this point right now, there's over 200 carvings around me within uh-huh. eight feet of me. Right. Well, how long am I going to keep doing this? <laughs> like, so I have, 200. Like, so I did. I did a quick count. I did yeah. a quick count. There's, there's over 200 carvings within That's eight unreal. feet of me here. Mind That's you, a, a lot, lot. Of them are, are, a lot of them are tiny, but uh, still, like, when is it time to sell it? And uh, when is it not? Yeah. I mean, including the unfinished ones. I probably have 30 in here. Yeah. Well, including those, maybe 40. So uh, going back to the, the beginner. Yeah. I thought that I had that came to me a while ago was like. Uh, you're a beginner when you're uh, when you're being taught by someone else. So say. What, to be, <laughs> I love your ringtone. To, to be fair. Uh, if you if, if you do a tutorial that yeah. I that I say say you do one of my videos or tutorial, right? And and you make a hundred of them, should mm-hmm. you sell them? Right. I, like, like I don't really care, mm-hmm. but I feel bad <laughs> for people that are doing these little carvings, and then their Etsy shop is full of these little carvings made from a tutorial. To me, it feels more like a they're they're trying to sell a paint by number painting, right? Like uh, there isn't a, a lot good of good analogy. Dif- mm-hmm. There isn't a lot of difference in the carvings, but if you add things and make them your own to start with, yeah, you know what I mean, right? Does that make sense? Oh, it does. I mean, that's a great that's a great analogy, and it goes to that thing of you know stealing is taking from people the, from just one person, taking from one source, you know, whereas borrowing from one here, one there, you know, somebody else over here, you. You compile that stuff and make your own style out of that. Uh, yeah, like a little little we are the world carving. Yeah, <laughs> a, little <bit> of, <laughs> a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's yeah. cool. But no, I think yeah. I mean, if you go through someone's entire catalog and you copy everything they do, and then you go and then you you know to an art show and you just sell what what you did in their class. It's well, for instance, judging. I can see when I'm looking at somebody's work what class they took. And so I don't even include that. I don't even judge that piece. I see, oh, that's a Janet Cordell class carving. I'm not going to count that. And it, it was a great, some of the best carvings that I see are carvings that people make in classes, but because I could see, oh, that was a Ferris class. That was a Vic Hood class. That was a, a Cordell class. I'm not going to judge them in the competition. I just refuse to because it's not original. I mean, you can tell in a, in a moment, you know, what, who, what class this person was taking. My my other thought about this is uh, how fast do you want to ruin your hobby? Yeah. Like when I get uh, emails from people that have started carving, they're always yeah. saying, I can't believe how much I'm enjoying this, how relaxing it is. Yeah. I've busied my hands and I feel productive. You start selling your stuff and then run to the post office or taking custom orders. Custom orders would, would be gross. I can't imagine <laughs> doing custom and the stress and the pressure that you start adding to yourself, taking yeah. on perhaps, I understand uh, Christmas time, making some ornaments and, and you know, right. family and friends and stuff and selling them here and there, a little market, Christmas mm-hmm. market or whatever. But to right. become a, a carver, I think that it may uh, suck some of the joy out of it. Yeah. And you can attest to that more than, than me because I don't sell, but that is right. your livelihood, right? Well, I don't even remember what it was like to not so i mean i've been selling since what for 13 for 14 years i've been selling carvings but yeah and it and then there is a certain joy to to making stuff for just for fun so my way of getting around it is well and let me back up before i get to my special way of getting around this uh discomfort that you can get from making faces for commit on commission right where the person's on the other end waiting for their thing and hope they hope it's really great 
Um, I think that it's horrible for the lay person, especially because they're not sitting there practicing whatever it is they do to, to the extent that, you know, like the nine to fiver, like a point that you've made in pr previous conversations, like the nine to fiver is not going to enjoy taking a commission, right? Cause they don't have the experience, probably don't have the experience to know how to knock something out without asking yeah. the, the client a hundred questions. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And then they go, Oh, and then before you know it, you've spent so much more time on the piece than it's worth for you and for them that it just becomes a wash and it's just agonizing. So, but you gain, you get experience, you get used to it and you just sort of knock things out. I mean, uh, it, and it, and it's less, less scary, but that takes years. I mean, I've, it's probably been like eight or nine years of doing commission work. Uh, it took me that long, at least before I was like, not a freaked out or afraid of it truly. Uh, but I also feel that it's also experience makes you a quicker carver. Yeah. Like how, uh, how humiliating would it be to spend five hours on something and then sell it for $12? <laughs> because I see that, I do see that a lot of underpriced carvings yeah. Yeah. on Etsy. They're not asking what they're worth. Mm -hmm. and I, I, Cause I can imagine how much time they actually have into it. So why would you want your hobby to make, be, make you $2 an hour? <laughs> like I would rather give it know. to someone and, and see their smile. Yeah. Than, uh, than to make a, a couple bucks an hour you know that's exactly it that's so much more fun yeah i mean giving people stuff is the best there's no yeah. better thing i made friends that way over the years giving carvings to people and it's the it's the best it's so fun but yeah better that <laughs> sell for ten dollars piggy piggybacking on that we had a comment somewhere i just read that doug should make his wood spirits and then leave them in, in the forest for people to find oh i read like, that <laughs> I don't know where that was, but I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll just work for six hours on something and then <laughs> leave it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, though. That that would be so I'm I'm not with you on that. I would I've been dreaming of that. I guess what I have I done it though, right? So yeah, I talk I about it. Saying, well, you should do that too. <laughs> <laughs> but I have thought about our park next door putting a couple of wood spirits in the woods, but it's it's yeah, bad for the trees. But it's oh sorry, no. Not no. on the trees, like on a carve a carve. Oh, and nail it to, to this. Ah. No, so they can take it home. Oh, so people can pick it up and take it home. And I was like, well, no, I no, don't no, know no. that I want to work a whole day and give it to some stranger. But, Speaking uh, of people giving carvings away, can you show folks the carving that? Because you showed me this a few days ago. Oh, I yeah, I definitely want to highlight this. Yeah. So I had a fella from California, uh, Mini Me Carvings on Instagram. If you know yeah. him. He is a uh, turned into a fantastic carver, and apparently I got him started in carving. And of course, as most do, he blew me, left me in the dust, and just took his <laughs> carving for. But uh, I got a package in the mail last week, and uh, it was his way of saying thanks for getting him started. And again, audio, it's uh, I'm showing it on YouTube, but look what I got <laughs> sent to me. So from good. this fella as a as a, a token of his appreciation for starting the carving and mm -hmm. i absolutely love it it's fantastic yeah the de even the the carving of the uh, the wood on the on the platform and uh little yeah. kelly kettle making coffee and oh, the guys gosh. got got earrings and beard and mm. i was just like so appreciative yeah and to think that someone spent the time to make it for me, it just means even more. And he wrote the me gym. a real nice, he wrote me a nice note on the bottom and uh, I'll, I'll just keep that. But uh, yeah. Look at the uh, jackets. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's got to be one of the, uh, the best things I've ever been given. I mean, so that's pretty epic. Yeah. I was, uh, I was so happy. I'm glad <laughs> you brought that up. Yeah. That's I could not, I mean, to me, that's like the ultimate, uh, the, the uh, highest echelon of fame is when people start to make uh, make people in your image and gift it to you. Uh, make make people make versions artworks of your face and send it to you. No, well, you no, that's not what he was doing. <laughs> he just wanted to touch something not, that would touch Doug one day. <laughs> that's not what he was doing. That's take it back. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Well, no, it just shows how much of an impact you've had on 
the carving the carving community and people introducing them to carving to me that's i well, mean you've done more for it than well here's the thing that's funny to me there are some carvers and i've kind of thought about this like they're they they in their i won't say who but it's written in their their mission statement that they want to push carving forward by making the best artwork in the world or something right like by up, basically creating a reverence for carving in the art world that doesn't exist now that as it exists in this craft world um but you've done more for carving with respect to getting people excited and and, and inciting new carvers than that the guy with that mission statement by a landslide and it's just because of the way that you do what you do you know the, the methodical way in which you do what you do how you present it you, you know just you and that's to me that is so so interesting to think about but you know it's it yeah I, I understand what you're saying but again i don't fully accept it because i wouldn't be doing it if gene messer hadn't done it yeah and that's how it goes right so right. uh yeah no gene for to. me too yeah yeah so i don't i don't fully accept that but anyway uh yeah any other thoughts on the uh to sell or not to sell you know it's funny <clears throat> yeah i was trying to since this is our our uh, our core core audience i guess i can i can talk candidly yeah but uh i've been debating selling just because i have enough already mm -hmm. but on the video side yeah uh i think i mentioned to you a while ago that uh like my computer is pretty well done you know and i'm like i i've i've done enough tutorials that anything i do and this is where it comes into beginner carving adding things to change the carving to make it their own or you know but every time i start a, a carving now i feel like it's like okay well we've done this before right. these are the feet you know these are the arms and what we're changing what they're holding or they're changing their hat or beard or no beard right and i was just i've just been weighing it, like what do i want to do in the future mm -hmm. like my the ideal retirement would be uh to live your life like no. as a as a carver and uh sell some carvings or whatever but mm -hmm. the videos are, are definitely uh really changing more to uh uh entertain is it not do i say entertainment what sure do i say demonstration How's right that? demonstrational rather than step-by-step -step <laughs> tutorial instruction tutorial and, right yeah yeah so uh anyway i was just saying like i could sell a bunch of carvings in the earth tools to buy a new computer right to make videos that that's a bad circle of income <laughs> <laughs> the death spiral yes <laughs> but when you have to when you did the money that you make has to go back in the tools that you use no and, oh no so anyway no, because, because you can yeah yeah what uh, say it say it say it then you have well, you a computer could, yeah. i don't care about a computer what am i gonna do with a computer <laughs> other than other than uh, edit videos the, yeah. that that is that's like buying a new drill <laughs> to me there's no there's yeah. no joy enjoying that but anyway i spec one out and uh i probably will end up getting a new computer yeah but i spec one out for what i need because uh i don't want to buy another one yeah very soon very soon yeah and uh to get the uh the size or the i don't even know i'll say numbers i don't know what they mean but the ram mm -hmm. i'm told going forward if i'm if i'm shooting a higher resolution yeah 4k even yeah i have to get minimum 16 gig of ram yo absolutely i got the 8 gig and i fought with it today for three hours yeah and are you off. you're not even shooting you're not even shooting in 4k are you no 18 no yeah so no. i definitely have to get a better computer, i would have so in hindsight yeah yeah so they're very dear mm -hmm. but, well i'm sorry i don't know how i got to this uh, <laughs> no no you get this, it. how this conversation came here <laughs> now we're talking about computers but yeah speaking of computers phones let's talk about phones. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 
don't know how it got there. I, <laughs> I think it was phones. just valid, thinking about going forward, like, what do I really want to do? Right. Make videos or make more carvings and sell carvings. That's what that was yeah. it. Make yeah. videos or sell carvings. Because I always said, as a part-time hobby, mm-hmm. definitely I can't do both. Right. You know, definitely can't do both. Right. That's, that's, that would, like, I have very limited time as it is. And to even think about doing both is... Well, to me, the easy answer is film the carvings that you're making to sell. And that's what I, well, although, look, I haven't tried, tested, and proven that this is the way to go, but I've been um, filming the carving that I've been making lately and just, you know, fast forwarding through it, creating time lapse. So that's one option for you. Yeah. Well, when you go to the demonstration, yes, you're right. Right. That, that, that is something you could do. But uh, right. I wanted to say, uh, as much as I like teasing you about nobody liking you on YouTube, <laughs> I noticed like you're getting some pretty good views. You got a good video a couple of days ago. Thanks. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, uh, it, it's still it's, well. it's still like one twentieth of what you would get, you know, on, on your first day of uploading. But today, after sitting around for a few days, but I'm very proud of it. And I took your advice. I had been making these videos, like I said, time lapses. And Doug was like, man, you need to make them more. You need to like stop the time lapse for a few seconds and like let it like the carving happen and like go back and forth between that real time carving and the time lapse. So I did that. And yeah, I think it's working out. It's more it's more fun to watch when I look back at them when yeah. there's a little bit of carving, some talking and then some time lapse. So, yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't matter the, what speed you put it at, that becomes the norm. So you still need a change right. from a certain speed, you know. Or otherwise, just dizzying, it just makes you feel yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but at the same call. time, you don't want to give away all your secrets. No, you right. want them to be intrigued to join your school. Yeah, right. So yeah, exactly. I well, I have an up I have an update for that uh, back what three or four weeks now about that viral video. Oh, that I'd love to hear. All remember, I said uh, when your when the short video made the short shelf. Yeah, there was no monetization. Like that, that right? Video yeah, yeah, yeah. Was was so pathetic, and the abuse, like the fifteen thousand thumbs down. <laughs> we're almost at eleven million. It's 10, 10, wow. 10, 10, 10. 10.9 million. But anyway, my story is uh, YouTube. Uh, sent me a thing today saying that I qualified for their uh, short partner. So I get every month, I guess they put so many million dollars into this uh, fund and everybody, millions and millions of creators will get a little piece of this. So I qualified, uh, I get a little piece of their, their, uh, their fund. For oh. that. So I'm actually going to get paid a little bit. I think it's like a hundred bucks. Oh, that's nice so, though. I mean, so it's something. It's so something. I, I, yeah. my hatred is is waning a little bit. Still not <laughs> worth it. Still yeah. not worth all the hate. But it, it's right. nice that uh, they recognize that. Yeah. They 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 got 11 million views out of my video, and I got nothing. So, jeez, all that that's advertisement <laughs> they got from you. Yeah. So well, yeah. that's good news. I wasn't expecting that. No, I wasn't either. I was I was surprised. Well, let me say this. You got me excited about YouTube Studio. So I posted a video and I got zero views. Zero. Zero views. I, I posted a little uh, short. None. Really? Is that possible? I didn't know that was possible. It is. It is possible. <laughs> you didn't even go back and watch it yourself 10 times? No, I probably should have, though. That would make me feel less bad. <laughs> <laughs> at least get your girlfriend to watch it or your wife or something right? yeah it's a that short thing that's still it's just a it's a it's a lottery yeah like i did i i went back and deleted all my short videos except for that one yeah it's just because i didn't like it you, you know what we're talking nerd talk to the audience but it's true it, it screwed up uh the algorithms yeah so so if you make a, a 48 second video and your next video is is 48 minutes it's you know they said oh uh uh, viewing time is up on this video well yeah because the other one is 48 seconds and this you know what i mean like it tells you that that uh, you've got uh, people are watching your videos longer 
Well, yeah, because they didn't have a chance on 40 seconds <laughs> yeah. to stay there that long. So it, it screws up all your analytics and stuff. But anyway, well, that's that's weird. They should fix that. Yeah. So, well, as far as selling artwork for me, it was after a couple of years, two years of carving. I felt eh, a year and a half. My mom's friends bugged me about selling stuff before then, and I, I wasn't feeling it. I just didn't like. I didn't like anything I was making. And then by the time I got to liking stuff that I was making enough to where I felt like I wouldn't be hating myself for selling it or thinking, you know, a year later, Oh my gosh, I'd pay you to take that off your wall. Uh, I just, yeah. I mean, that's when I started selling. So for me, I I think I would encourage people to sell their work as soon as they're proud of it. As soon as they feel like it's, it's worth worthwhile. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So, and it's no diss on anybody who does it. It's just yeah. uh, that was the, the question that came up, and that's that's just opinion's sake. But uh, yeah. yeah, like I like I've been at this for I don't know five or six years at least, right. and uh, yeah, now I'm thinking about it. Will right. I? I don't know. Yeah. So do not email me asking for a carving. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I will or not. But right. uh, anyway, right. All right. So I think we beat that to death, did we? I think we did. Gosh, oh, what's it. this? What's this? <gasps> Mail bag. bag. <laughs> that was the one. That was the one. This we is the time. A... <laughs> go, ahead. Go, yeah, go ahead. I wanted to make up an intro. And this is the time at every show where we talk about what you guys want to talk about. coffee and carving show here we go we we uh quite a few this week isn't there there are yeah okay so here we are oh there it is inboxes we got quite a few nice little uh encouraging comments um oh but before you even get to the mailbag you said encouraging comments i was encouraged also with uh, we had some coffee bought for us this week. Yay! So a big thanks to uh, to the one who bought us the coffee. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we but, appreciate uh, it. We do appreciate it. That was that was nice. So. <laughs> I had a coffee this morning on their behalf at my parents' house. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> my mom it's... paid for that coffee. Um, or dad. Uh. This is good. Okay. Um, Thank you for an amazing podcast. This is from Luke. I have a question for you. Do you think anyone can become a good wood carver or an artist? Do you need to have a gift or is it just hard work? What is the talent for you in general? Is it perseverance? Do you need to be born with some qualities? Thanks, Luke. Can you say that T word again? Qualities? No. Thank you. No. (laughs) Perseverance. Do you need to be born with some sort of of qualities? Oh, I thought you said talent. Say talent. Talent. Okay. (laughs) Did I say talent? Yeah, you said something something that I was like, what did you say? Talent? Like something I can make fun of. You got to be you got to be born with talent. (laughs) <laughs> number one you yeah. got to learn how to speak good uh the question yes uh i don't think so mm-hmm. i think there are some rules that you can learn in some order of business but i think you can curve easily case in point people always wonder if i can draw i can't draw a stick man mm-hmm. and uh, i just follow you know, basic uh, schedule of order and carve stuff. Right. I don't, I, I may have some quirky ideas. Yeah. But uh, the carving itself, I think that uh, at the very least, you can definitely be a carver and even following, uh, that's why they make books for carvers. Yeah. To, uh, to carve things that you can be mighty proud of. Right. So maybe to take it to an extreme that's where the, the 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 talent or the imagination really 
imagination over talent, even because the skill is the cutting, the carving. Uh, that's my take. What are you thinking? No, that's great. That's a good point. I'll piggyback on that wholeheartedly. That that said, you will be talented when you're when you're a good carver. <laughs> right. <laughs> you'll develop. You'll turn into a good. Uh, uh, yeah. You'll, you'll you'll turn into a better carver. Yeah. But I don't think you have to be. Uh, have an, I guess the I guess what I'm thinking is uh, the uh, artist talent. Yeah. Born in you. I don't know that that's true or not. Um. Or we're mm-hmm. too blind to see it that we we may and we don't recognize it. Maybe. But I think I never. Uh, I never. Uh, like I said, I can't draw. I can't do anything else. So I mean, it's yeah. just my, a series of cuts. Mm-hmm. And once you once you learn the the order, I I believe you can be a carver. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. All right. Next. 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 Have these all nicely organized. And well, let's just have some more dead air then. Yeah. Let's just listen to the sweet sound of silence. Or my typical video, I'll just breathe. <laughs> <laughs> when I go back and I'm trying to edit, I'm like, oh, man, what can I do? Like, just show my nose plugs in. Go, like, heavy breathing in the microphone all the time. Dude, I have the same. Th- I hate that. Dur- the old Darth Vader in the carving video. <laughs> <laughs> Cody from well who knows where he's from he says would you guys be willing to show your wall mounts that you attach your cottonwood bark to I have a few ideas but wouldn't mind learning from your experience I don't mind doing it I just feel so bad for the audio yeah that's always uh, always gets uh, the, the, the short end so yeah but mind if I could what Oh, I gotta unplug everything. That's fine right there. Yeah, I love that natural edge one. Yeah, that backboard you have. So, and and to be fair, this is just a ripoff of uh, Alec, who is a rip. Which is a rip off of, of Ron Adamson. Ron Adamson, who possibly ripped it off from somebody else, but basically just a, a slight. We all, we're going to argue about what degree or of an angle we put on but i've i've had uh that is my fourth iteration of a bark carving station so you'll you'll learn what you like or what degree but i had a sit down i had two different sit down ones i had a wall mount originally on the other side of the room yeah now this is my uh hopefully final final bark carving station but it's really minimal like five five degree angle yeah but to be fair, you don't even have to have it on an angle. No. No. And while you're talking, here's mine. Yep. So it's, you basically have what we got three two by sixes to yeah. down to one. Three two by oh. fours and then one two by four on top. One be- three below, one on top. It doesn't look like a two by four. Is it two mm-hmm. by four on top? It is. Huh. Yeah. Uh so three to one over over yeah. what thirty thirty two inches? How long is your probably third? Well, if that maybe yeah 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 I'd say thirty yeah maybe even thirty six yeah. yeah I think I got about four feet here so yours is longer yeah it is, it is. but I uh, like I said I went back to the wall from trying to work off the bench and we talked before about jaw horses mm-hmm. and uh, I I like to get some real good oomph behind it. And uh, that's why when I use my jaw horse downstairs, I, I fasten to the floor because I'm constantly pushing things all over the place because I'm right. pushing too hard. And that's what I kind of found, even though my workbench is bolted to the floor here, <clears throat> mm-hmm. I, I like the wall that I can just just really lean into it without anything moving or shaking. So, um, I'm not sure how to spell or say this f- first name. Uh, I'm going to try, though. Yingv. Yingv. Ingwe, Ingwe. There was a, I think that's Ingwe? the same as that. There was a, fav, a famous guitar player, Ing, Ingwe oh, Steen or something. Ingwe, thank you, Ingwe. Well, hey guys, <laughs> apologies if it's not. <laughs> Sorry, it's better than what I had, though. Doug's version. 
Curious if Alec has ever tried a linker style caricature from one of Doug's videos or made up one of his own little guys. Also, I watched Alec's carving video on the Viking. So much to learn. I notice he doesn't do stop cuts for the mustache or eyebrows. He just rounds them out and they kind of flow into place. So this is a nice compliment. That has helped me improve my carving. Thank you. Ingve? In- how do you say it? Ingwe. Yeah, ing- Ingwe. I don't want I don't want to say it anymore. I don't want to say it. I We're think that's it. Salting him with every pronunciation. Alec has not tried carving Doug's caricature style. Although the carvings that got me into carving were these caricature style carvings. The first three carvings I ever did were of a boot, a dog, and then what was the third one? Something else. I think I never did the third one. I think there were just two. Oh, and then a soap truck. But they were kind of caricaturized. They're they're caricaturized uh, carvings. But then I didn't go far beyond that style um because i liked the fact that you could i well one i discovered cottonwood bark from youtube and i got my hands on some and yeah i preferred that yeah i'm i'm uh i'm in love with cottonwood bark too yeah yeah Yeah. it's actually is my new favorite medium (laughs) no it's it's awesome he's got it that was a good observation on his part though talking with the beards because it's true and again i think it goes back to like the flat plane versus the realism because Mm -hmm. i always look for these sharp cuts on the on the uh the beard lines you know cheek pops out beard there 45 degree deep deep cut v cut and uh that's not how your face looks it just flows it's right it's just smooth you know but that's (laughs) the that's the flat plane carving style right right for so. sure. Yeah. Roger Ivister. I shouldn't have read his last name, but I'm sure he won't be upset. Uh, Doug and Alec, I really am enjoying the show. I've been carving for about eight months. Finally broke down and bought some cottonwood bark. Speaking of the devil. When watching your videos, I have seen you using sandpaper to smooth your carvings while you're carving. And I think I said, heard Alec say that he uses 220 grit sandpaper. Do you traditionally only use 220 on cottonwood bark and on basswood? Do you start with 150 and then move to 220? um thanks for the videos and and in the awesome entertainment together i am older than doug and relate to a lot of the references he makes nice the banter y'all have is great do you want to start on that what you how you treat cottonwood bark what grit sandpaper you use see i raised my hand and the hand came up yeah it's (laughs) weird uh i don't sand uh basswood at all i i like to see the uh the the cut the facets mm-hmm. from from the knife i like to see the tool marks so I, I don't sand the basswood personally right uh maybe if i did some really heavy heavy sharp hair and had some things i might i might just give it just just a wipe yeah but not not even i wouldn't even say that i actually i just if I was in the paint process and thought it was a little bit too sharp or edgy, but I wouldn't count that as sanding. Right. Uh, but uh, as far as the uh, cottonwood bark, two twenty. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Sometimes I will. Uh, I don't know if you know, but I sometimes switch from two twenty. Say I'm my carving is done. I'll use two twenty, and then sometimes if I want to get like really fine, even even almost not quite a polish, but I'll switch to like a. a synthetic sandpaper like uh looks like a pot scrubber oh oh like the uh yeah the scrubby pad uh, the yeah yeah but it's not it's well it isn't yeah yeah it's made for that but uh it's really super super fine yeah and uh you could if you rub it hard enough it'll actually go to a shine which Hmm. you may not want but Hmm. no yeah i've not tried that on the bark i don't think do you find years uh, ago but, mm. Do you find 220 uh, leaves minimal scratching? Oh yeah, no, it's not a problem. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, sometimes I like 320, uh, yeah. and uh, it's so soft you can use either one. 320, mm-hmm. 220, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter um, right. with the cottonwood bark, go. but we differ on the basswood because I definitely. Uh, I, I sand basswood, but I don't carve basswood very often. So you, you would be the better person to talk to. Although 
I, I like the look of sanded face the, the face when it's sanded so that's what i'll do yeah. from now for, from forever you know but this is from damon he says uh hi dan and alan i've been carving <laughs> for a while and have no problem following a tutorial but struggle with coming up with my own carving design how do you come up with original ideas any suggestions on how i can get the imagination and creative juices flowing love the podcast by the way well that's uh that's a good question uh i think we already kind of covered it with the uh yeah. the originality mm -hmm. and it's basically just uh starting with something and then putting your take on it okay. so like a the guy can be holding a a coffee cup mm -hmm. or it could be holding an axe right you change his hat you change basically look look around at what you see mm -hmm. and and uh, mimic i think you had a thing go tell tell your little thing about uh copying art mm -hmm. and uh how you you don't really copy carving so much as look at pictures of mm -hmm. real right. real life right well from uh, Lauren Siffering, this mentor I had, uh, who was also a painter, and I, I took some painting lessons from him. And the first tip he gave me was to go in his uh, his uh, file cabinet, find a picture that I liked. He had hundreds and hundreds of pictures of wildlife and animals. And he said, find a picture and post it up next to your painting. And the goal, he said, is to spend more time looking at the painting than, uh, sorry, the picture than the painting. He said, you know, you'll become familiar with the painting by looking at it, uh, by, by looking at the picture. So the, he said, you know, the mistake that people make, they focus on the picture that they're making, they're the painting or the artwork or the sculpture or whatever, when really the best move, focus on the, the reference that you're using. So, yeah, I don't, I think for a while I tried to copy Ron Adamson and then Ferris and then these other guys, but then soon I learned from Lauren I was probably 16 or 15 when I took my first painting lesson from him. And from then on, I never used another carving as a, as a guide. I don't carve based on other carvings. Um, I'm definitely inspired by other carvers, but uh, I would never pull up a picture of someone else's carving as my, as my go-to for a yeah. carving any longer. So, yeah. So the originality just comes from looking around yeah. at real, real life scenarios, yep. real life faces, real life, everything. And yeah. just, copying that instead yeah exactly yeah. yeah and like i said you can if you were following a tutorial mm. put different things in his hands and change his hat yeah whiskers on whiskers off i mean yeah t-shirt muscle you know wife beater you, right. you can just uh switch it up and uh right. then it's yours yeah yeah yeah. It's so many times, do. so many times my tutorials, like the people do exactly the same over and over. Like, yes, change the hat, change the coat, give him something, give him a stick in his yeah. hand. You know? It's uh, yeah, it doesn't. Uh, I take, am so it, excited when students take a project that we're doing and they make their own version of it. I get so yeah. excited that I have to keep myself from spending all of my time with that person because I just start to like them more. And that's probably, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say that. Didn't say that. You shouldn't say that. Take that back. I'm sorry. I, I like all of my students exactly the same. Just like when I have kids in the future, I'll like them all exactly the same amount as much as I love them. So if you take Alex's class, just rebel right off the start. And the guys who rebel, well, there are two classes of people that rebel, two categories. The people that don't listen because they're stubborn. And the people that don't listen because they have a better idea. And <laughs> most of the time that... It's the first, but the ones that well, like take the ideas that you're giving, they really pay attention. Then they make their own stuff. You know, now cool. there's a, there's another side to that too, though. Yeah. Is that, uh, I have found myself many times trying yeah. to carve something, mm -hmm. screwing it up along the way and yeah. it becoming something totally different. Oh, oh, that's the, yes. Like e always. every carving yeah. is that way. Yeah. Every oh, single just, carving. Oh, just busted off this or just went too deep here you know let's change it and let's make it and that's part of the fun is yep. working through that process like people always get used to get mad at me because i would always if i didn't like the carving i would just go and cut its head off on the bandsaw or whatever <laughs> or, or, or burn it but uh you said a good practice is just work through it 
work through it till you get something that is desirable. Yeah. It doesn't have to be what you started out trying. Oh yeah. Just keep on, keep your knife in the wood and it'll turn into something else. And so. at the far extreme, if you've been working on something forever and you hate it and you're wasting time, don't, don't stay a slave to that thing that you started, you know, just because you started it, you can scrap things sometimes. Right. Yeah. Or, Right. Just set it aside. That's that's it. That's it. Set it aside. Yeah. And a month later, it'll just come to you. Bang, bang, bang. It'll be beautiful. That's I've true. had that happen before too. No, you're right. That's more of that's more often yeah. what, what I'll do too. Yeah. So oh good. Okay. This is just rabbit trail comment, but it just made me so happy. The title for this was Comanche with a hundred thousand exclamation points. It says, Hey, Alec and Doug. Hey, Alec. Um, so are we ever going to see the Jeep? I've always wanted a Comanche, but only have had CJs and Wranglers. I know the pain of rush living in West Virginia. Uh, what are your plans for it? Just fix it up and drive it. Or are you going to lift it? Those four O's are great engines. Good luck with it. Oh, hello, Doug. How are you? They'll take care. <laughs> oh, you like it. Cause it's all about you. That's exactly that, right. That's exactly and then at the right. end, for once in yeah. my life, yeah, the, the, oh, you're, oh, yeah, you're an afterthought. Too. Okay. There yeah, go. yeah. No. Um, no, it really, I, well, the real reason I like it so much is I spend so much time nerding out. I've been going to bed every night at like one in the morning. You know, I go, hit the hay at 11 and then I sit on my phone and I look up. I follow these stupid rabbit trails of people in the comment, uh, these, uh, you know, forums and stuff but it's so much fun but uh about the jeep oh about the jeep yeah i should say that yeah, yeah the jeep yeah. forums yeah. and all the stuff talking about it. there's not that much info on them because they were never really all that i they, they didn't ever gain the following that the wranglers and this the cjs and the uh you know they, they never did as well uh but they are kind of a fun little awkward baby that that jeep came up with and then they 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 canceled because the Dodge was, was conflicting with their, their subsidiary or their, their, they bought out Dodge at Chrysler did in the nineties. And then sure enough, the, the cheap truck was co competing with the smaller Dodge and they axed it. So, cause the Dodge sold a lot better. So yes, to answer your question, I am going to do my best to restore it. That's my plan. As of right now, I'm going to, I'm going to probably sometime in January, put the money into it and just get it painted and the body work done. Why am I doing that? Because I am uh, an idiot because it's a, it's a probably a waste of money. <laughs> I probably could have spent what I'm about to spend on this truck and bought a reliable daily driver that I could drive across the state that, or across the country and teach my classes with and tow stuff. But instead I bought a fun old car because i thought it looked cool so uh it, it, the the truth is uh i'll probably end up uh i won't lift any truck ever i think lifting oh. trucks is the is the dumbest thing i don't know why i have such a strong opinion i mean i don't judge people that lift their trucks but i would never lift a truck i don't get it crazy talk crazy talk it looks stupid well unless it's you know two two or I three inches maybe four inches it looks good oh yeah Oh yeah, you don't want to go ridiculous. No, but you, but well, you, well, you're not from the states because I drive through the the south, right? And I see people that take normal sized trucks and they put monster truck tires on them. It's like no, come on. But let's if I had your truck as a four wheeler, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. we're going we're going straight to the lift store and putting 35 inch mutters on there, right? <laughs> and and I would just feel cool. Well, if I had mine as a four by uh, the four wheel, I might consider uh, putting more rowdy tires on there too. But no, it's just a two wheel drive uh, daily commuter type situation. But in fact, uh, Gladiator makes a mm -hmm. boring version. Oh, the, the daily driver version. And it, that's stupid. I don't, I don't like it at all. It's got to have the monster tires on it. It does look gotta, better. It, it looks, looks so, so much, much better. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. those things, I'll never have one. Uh, maybe like, maybe in 20 years, like you were saying. Yep. 20 <laughs> uh, years. Doug, you young whippersnapper. I kind of want to read it in an old man. Doug, you young whippersnapper. Sorry, Stan. <laughs> I know you don't sound like that, but. Um, well, it's I Stan. I know Stan. <laughs> I remember fondly when I was working construction and when the crew went to lunch. Oh, this is in reference to our coffee talk. 
and at those greatly missed blue plate din- diners back in the day. They would always have iced coffee on hand in the summertime, usually included in your order. That's wild. An iced coffee with your order? Not a $10 latte, schmancy, fancy flavored concoction. Love the show and you guys and look forward to the Friday afternoons with you too. I have more yesterdays than I do tomorrow is how he signed out. That's yeah, sad. he always That's signs out. Yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, sad. Yeah. He's been following. Uh, I, I've, I've read lots of comments from Stan. So yeah. Thanks, Stan. Uh, I don't understand. I Maybe I missed something in life because to me, cold coffee is new. It's not yeah. like I... I don't know. Maybe it's just the all the Dutchmen are in, that, uh, in this town. <laughs> Nobody ever wanted cold coffee. But yeah. or I had another thought. They also drink a lot of cold tea in the states, don't they? Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So I don't know. That's not really a, a big thing here. I mean, you can get iced tea, but it's, yeah, you know, you get a brisk, whatever. Well, you know. Well, it makes you sense know. where it's warmer. You've got the colder drinks, and you guys yeah. are cooler up there. So well, maybe that's part of it too. I don't, I don't know. know. Me either. But I, I'm, but I am new. I am a co- new convert. Uh, and cold brew is ice, the best. Ice coffee and yeah. cold brew. Oh yeah. Mind you, how about this? If it was uh, hot or cold, there's no way in the world I'm grabbing the cold first. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. That's fair. Yeah, like I would not wake up in the morning and have a cold coffee. You. That doesn't even that doesn't even seem natural. Nope. No. I mean, may, maybe if it's like the dead of summer, and it's yeah. I don't know what, hot. The dead of summer, the hot of summer, the live of summer. Yeah. If it's I don't know. Coffee. Waking up and the thought of ice cubes doesn't mix with me. Right. So, let's move along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a question from Caleb. He's asking about what we would do if outside of tools and knives to build a shop. Um, or to create a workshop. Um, so I'm guessing he has a, a room and he wants to turn it into a wood carving studio. He says he's 31, he's relatively young and he's been carving for two years, but never really considered himself to be a handyman or anything. So I have no idea how to go about creating a workshop. I don't have any power tools or know much about how to use them, but in the future, I would like to slowly start gathering tools. Caleb from the UK. Hmm. I think we should keep it to carving. What do you? I don't. I don't know about. We should <laughs> talk about out, outfitting a, a a workshop. Well, if he's but, talking about carving, a, a carving yeah. workshop. As far as building the shop, I'm, I don't. Yeah, yeah no, but I think as far right. as if, if if I could only have one one tool in a carving room. Yeah. One power tool. I think I'm going with the mini bandsaw. Yeah, a smaller bandsaw. You don't need a big honking bandsaw. Yeah, I have a big one in my workshop, and I have a nice little little Rikon here, and uh, yeah, it does everything I need it to do. Right, just for quick roughing out little shapes and sizes, and yeah, yep. And then, and adi- the only thing I would add to that, well, not the only thing, but a good sharpening station. I like the oh. work the work sharp, and yes. a good bench. A really nice sturdy bench that you can mount things to, that you can screw stuff to, that you could, you know, that isn't too pretty that you can't work. I on. never even thought about a sharpening station. You are, are yeah. correct. See, in my mind, I w- could work in here with candles and have no power because yeah, I like the idea. There's yeah. something more romantic about not having a, mm. a bandsaw in the corner of my carving, <laughs> right? right? But yeah. yeah. This is Brad. He says, keep up the good work, guys. I really enjoy the hour I spent with you. And I just watched number 11 with drink, while drinking my morning espresso. Uh, yes. I have a question for Alec. Do Comanche drivers wave at each other like Wrangler drivers do? I drive a 2014 Wrangler. Uh, yes, and I wish more of them would. Not Because not all of them do. Maybe, 20, maybe 30%, 40% of them do. I wish all of them did. I love the attention. I lo- well, really, I just love being a part of a club. Yeah. And that's that's something being that accepted. I, well, being <laughs> accepted for once. <laughs> you <son of> a gun. <laughs> well, what it is, well, that and the other thing is, uh, you know, the Harley David from a marketing perspective, being a marketing major in school, I think it's really neat 
when companies like Apple and Harley Davidson create brands that people want to put, you know, Apple logos, people put them on their trucks. People put uh, Harley Davidson tattoos on their arm. You don't see a Suzuki tattoo on people's arms, right? I mean, Harley did something very special with their branding and so did Jeep. Although Jeep, they have a, a, a history of making um, vehicles for the, for the war. And, and that's actually where the Jeep wave came from is uh, allies would wave at each other in their trucks. And so apparently that's where that comes from. But so that subculture is kind of neat and it's kind of fun that that was ever even a, you know, the brands can do that. It's fun, but. Do you know what the uh, Jeep CJ stands for? Uh, convertible. No, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. It's, a, it's the civilian Jeep. Oh, that's cool. Because yeah, like you said, they, uh, they started with the military. Huh. Uh, motorcycles all have a, a wave, uh, a wave uh, thing too, eh? They oh, all wave to each other. It's like a little cool little little flick of the finger. Oh yeah, we're the low uh, arm. Yeah. One yeah. time I tried to stick my arm out of my Honda and when some truck came out because I saw it and I thought it was cool when I was younger and they didn't wave back. Do you do do you pump your arms when you see a big transport too? <laughs> Sometimes well, you, do you not do that? No. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Daryl and Allen, just kidding. Hello from the Red River Valley north of Winnipeg. Oh, wait, did I read this one? That's yeah, I did. <laughs> I, could, I could go off on it. I'll tell you a Red River. Did you know I went to Red River in 1990 and uh, threw sandbags? Dude, Everybody's like off the... pausing the episode, checking which one they're on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everyone just checked out. I already listened to this one. Yeah, yeah. No, you haven't. All right. Stick Next. around. I think that's it. I, I saw one from uh, the International Association of Woodcarvers. No, you did not. I did so. Blake and Tom have a question there. Oh, you're Somewhere. right. Somewhere. I'm going to look for dig it. Dig deep. Blake. Oh, I'm going to look for international. All right. Here we go. Dear Angelo and Darcy, my question for you is pick one carver you wish you could sit down with and carve. Also, what is the subject you would want to carve with that person? P.S. Or ps, keep up the great work. Your friends, Blake and Thom. Thom. Aw. <laughs> uh, well, I hate to do this. I hate to do this. I hate to blow smoke up your butt. But I actually, we've been talking about me taking, coming and taking a class with you for a long time, over a year. So that that's my priority is to occur with you, even though I don't want it to go to your head, you know. Mm -hmm. But no, yeah. oh, it, ha it has already. It's too late. Yeah. And this, <laughs> the, the subject. Stop it, Doug. I, Just stop it. <laughs> stop it. Yeah. Take, <laughs> stop. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the funnest subject, which will not be on our first uh, carving session. Yeah. But I don't even want to say it out loud because someone's going to steal it. Mm -hmm. But I will. So then we can call them on it. <laughs> <laughs> Harry in the Henderson. Oh, yeah. Bigfoot as a green man. Oh, yeah. Monkey, oh, with the face? face with the green man. That's what oh, I want. That would be awesome. Yeah. Monkey face and the green man, uh, leafy hair and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm honored, but uh, I, I don't know. I would never think to do the Harry. And the, well, you introduced me to Harry and the Henderson's uh, Bigfoot. I've never seen yeah. that movie. Yeah. So, or show. Is it a show or a movie? It was both. I think it was a movie first and became a show. Huh. Maybe I got it backwards. I better not say. Yeah. I can't pretend I watched every episode. It wasn't really my thing, but I just right. liked him as a character. Um yeah, again, I'm very I'm very honored. And I do think you're buttering me up. Okay. But I will right. say get, get over I will it. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. All, All right. right. It's um all right, move uh, along. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
don't dwell on it. I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Doug, like, let's think. Let's talk about that a little more. Let's deep dive into that. Why actually, me? The more, no. I, the more I think about it, <laughs> the more I want to go curb with <laughs> anyone else. Anyone really? Anyone anybody. who volunteered? A- anybody? I don't know. For me, it's like. Uh, 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 of course, I'm, I'm excited about carving with you. Uh, I I don't know who it would be. I can't pick one. I should have said Alec with a sock in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it would have balanced it out. People wouldn't have thought you were we were on good terms. You know that would have been weird. Um, yeah, but uh, the um, I don't know. Maybe Bruno, Bruno Wolpa, Bruno or. One of those guys from Italy. Ooh, Pat. Pat Burke. He's one, too, I've been wanting to carve with for a while. He's a young... What I like about him is he's not that far, and he's a young dude, and he's uh, he's just the best. He's just so dang good. Pat Burke. Mm. Pat Burke. He's the guy. And I need to. He's given me... He's invited me over there, but I haven't... I need to just call him up and bomb... Just bomb his studio and, with a bunch of carving tools real annoying like and be like, Hey, I need to carve with you, Pat. Can you just stop what you're doing and teach me how to carve? <laughs> <laughs> so good question uh, but that I, I, year, thought, I thought i thought you might have said me but that, that's okay that's no. okay <laughs> <laughs> that's the perfect answer good Move on. i'm trying to get you back i'm trying to get you back oh man i am excited for us to meet up and carve in person uh that's it um oh oh no these are the questions for the school <laughs> <laughs> all right well that's good we're uh we're probably yeah. over time already we're so, way over time are we so yeah would you even uh learn anything watch anything uh anything that would interest anybody else mm. Mm-mm-mm. trying to learn swedish i'm on lesson number one uh on uh whatever this babble or something and uh and then really bad but trying to learn greek and uh it's just bad i'm trying but uh I suck at learning languages, so I stink at learning languages. Sorry for those tender ear ones. You're trying to learn Swedish? Yeah. And Greek? Yep. Why don't you pick one? Well, if I had to pick one, it'd be Greek. But the Swedish one is just uh, one that I'll never actually learn, but I'll just kind of poke around in this this app that my buddy gave me a link to and until I get bored. And, and then I'll know how to say hi and bye, basically. That's Tell me you're doing Duolingo. No, it's uh, called Babbel. It's kind of oh, like okay. it's like Duo yeah. Lingo, but my buddy accidentally bought it. Well, he bought a subscription and then didn't have the language he wanted, so he gave it to me. So, okay, yeah. What about you? That's, I I I I just want to think about that a little bit longer. Why <laughs> Why would you? I don't understand how you think sometimes. <laughs> oh, why two at once? Why two at once? Well. You know what it was is I was talking to Annalise about it and I want to learn, I've wanted to learn Swedish since I went to Sweden. And then, and then I wanted to learn Greek since my family was, my mom's side is from there. And, uh, and then I Googled it while we were talking, I was at a red light and I was like two languages at once. And it, everyone said from the brief uh, red light, you know, review that I did online, I found that people <laughs> like it. It's good for your brain. Apparently, learning two languages at once. Who would have thought? Oh, I guess I, I think that, that that for me that would be the 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 best recipe to not do anything. Right. Is well, too much. Trying to too yeah. bite off more than you could chew. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm so ADD. It's kind of fun for me to be looking forward to the Greek after the Swedish one. Yeah. Because because otherwise I'm just bored right away starting into it. I don't have something else to look forward to. I have, I know we're over time, but uh, I have stories. I always have stories, but yeah. uh, I went to Dutch school as a little boy. Oh, yeah. My little wooden shoe wearing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Saturday mornings, I went to Dutch school to uh, learn the Dutch and spell Dutch and learn all of the things in my house. And I mean, oh. I can't talk. I still can't talk it, but uh yeah, and then uh, Sophie, of course, being a French Canadian. Yeah, uh, when I was dating her, I tried. To, we have to learn French in school. Mm. Really? But yeah, but you never really learn it. You just learn yeah. the cheats to pass. Well, like, right. I mean, unless you really care, and I never <laughs> cared. Right. And uh, 
their French teachers were always the ones you would harass the most. But anyway, uh, <laughs> dating Sophie, then I thought, well, I'm going to, you know, I got a long drive and I'll start learning, relearning French and uh, I'll really, sh- I'll impress them. I'll, t- you know, I'll, I'll show them like I'm French, right? Right. And uh, <laughs> I did that. I bought some uh, books on tape and some, uh, some book. And so I was learning and practicing and went up there a couple of times and, uh, you know, shared my knowledge of the, the language and saw their snickers and their giggles. And I said, that's it. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried. I tried. You mocked me. I tried. Yeah. English only. Yep. Well, that's, so. the, that's the way it was for me learning Greek. I was so proud of myself. I was doing, you know, I went through six lessons and talked to my grandma, went to her house. My mom said, oh, yeah, is going to be so happy that you speak. Speak Greek now. I went over there and I said, "Hi, Yaya. I know how to say some words in Greek." In Greek, and she was like, "Oh, Alecomo," which means "No, Alec. That's not good Greek. Like that's very bad. No, try again." And I was like, "Oh, come on. I'm not talking to it's Yaya a, anymore." It's a Greek. fast language, isn't it? Greek. Yeah. You know, it's really not bad. I mean, it, I mean, especially not since you know I grew up with my mom and. Like, Grandparents speaking. I'm just trying to figure out. Like, I worked in a restaurant with three Greek brothers. Yeah, and I always thought they were fighting. Oh, you mean the language itself is fast? It seems faster, or even a little oh, bit or it could have just mean. been that they're they're brothers and they hated each other, or uh, <laughs> it's a fast. <laughs> but uh, Noah, you're right though. I know what you mean. It can be really fast. Yeah, I was yeah. like, are they yelling at each other? Are they just talking? Or right. uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway. No, uh, yeah. so that's what you've been up to in your spare time is learning two languages. Wow, that sounds it sounds more impressive than it is. Really, it's me going, talk, talk, welcome, words coming, welcome, talk, thank you, welcome, thank you, welcome. Now, if I'm with Swedish people, I can say hi, thank you, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so, all right. Well, I don't know what I'm. I'm I'm reading another book, but I'll probably I'll save that for another another week because uh, mm. it's probably the third time I've read this book, really? and I'm just getting back into it. So I'll I'll uh, I'll share more later. But it's uh well I can say the, the title. Yeah, I started I started rereading Walden by Henry David Thoreau, hmm. and like I said, I with this whole minimalism, downsizing tools, everything. I thought it'd be time to just bring it back and uh, yeah have another crack at Walden that it's the the basics is a uh, simplistic life okay I think we're talking about the book now I'll keep talking uh <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't going to but the thing that I know I'm not blind enough to buy into his whole scheme or his whole little perfect world of the tiny tiny house living and like nobody writes a book about how miserable they are right with what what little they have and it, there's always a trade-off so i'm not buying into it's the ultimate life or nothing. but uh, oh, anyway right. i i do uh, it's inspiring it gets you even if you do a little little things mm-hmm. you don't have to try and bite out the whole package because i remember there's reports of him uh eating at the neighbors all the time and uh, stuff like that <laughs> you know <laughs> so, yeah but other than that i was uh something I don't know if I should recommend it or not, but uh, I actually watch a TV show. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And, uh, it. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I watched an episode and I, I really, really sucked me in. I watched the whole series. I don't know that what, when I say series, that maybe it was like eight shows, uh, but I hesitate to recommend it because, you know, uh, English people don't put the same value on their words or we put more value whatever however we see uh bad words right <laughs> yeah so their their swears or our swears may necessarily not be their swears yeah. all that to say is uh i watched it with headphones on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in my house but anyway the show was a uh, clarkson's farm uh-huh. a farming show <laughs> jeremy clarkson was uh, one of the guys uh, from a, a old car show uh, oh top yeah year. That's right. Top he gear. looked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly. Yeah. Okay. So he was a the real cynical guy. Yeah. Yeah. But 
I like that sense of humor. Oh, he's great. So uh, he's fantastic. The 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 gist of it is that uh, he he owns a, a farm. He's a millionaire many times over, mm-hmm. and uh, millionaire. But he had a farm, like a thousand acre farm, that he had basically managed for him. And now uh, in this, uh, what happened? So his manager, his farm manager was retiring oh. and he didn't have a show anymore. And he said, uh, I'm going to take it over. And I'm going to, so this is basically the first year <laughs> trying to run his farm and all of the mistakes and oh, how yeah. he knows nothing. And yeah, it's, it, I really liked it. It was good. Really good show. <laughs> and some of the other characters that developed just made me laugh. Like, uh, yeah. So. I, I do like the old uh, the the English humor and the oh it's stuff. the best so, yeah so I really like that show so mm-hmm. Clarkson's Farm Clarkson's Farm but if you don't like the the language in some spots don't blame me fair warning so there you go all right we did it I think I think we 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 gotta get her get out because <laughs> this, this seems like it's really oh yeah really long this will be our longest one ever so yeah but thanks for sticking it's okay it's okay we don't have to uh there's no rules no. there's no rules in this podcast game yeah. huh. it's our do podcast. whatever you want yeah. that's right yeah so that said i'm doug i'm alec and we're out of here see you next week coffee and carving show at gmail.com there you go <laughs> comments goodbye everybody welcome bye <laughs>